in Seville, in the very portico of Santa Ines, and while, on Christmas Eve, I was waiting for the midnight mass to begin, I heard this tradition from a lay sister of the convent. As was natural, after hearing it, I waited impatiently for the ceremony to commence, eager to be present at a miracle. Nothing could be less miraculous, however, than the organ of Santa Ines, and nothing more vulgar than the insipid motets with which that night the organist regaled us. On going out from the Mass, I could not resist asking the lay sister mischievously, how does it happen that the organ of Master Perez is so unmusical at present? Why, replied the old woman. Because it isn't his. Not his? What has become of it? It fell to pieces from sheer old age, a number of years ago. And the soul of the organist? It has not appeared again since the new organ was set up in place of his own. If any one of my readers, after perusing this history, should be moved to ask the same question, now he knows why the notable miracle has not continued into our own time. I, do you see that man with the scarlet cloak and the white plume in his hat, the one who seems to wear on his waistcoat all the gold of the galleons of the Indies, that man, I mean, just stepping down from his litter to give his hand to the lady there, who, now that she is out of hers, is coming our way, preceded by four pages with torches? Well, that is the Marquis of Moscoso, suitor to the widowed Countess of Villa Pineda. They say that before setting his eyes upon this lady, he had asked in marriage the daughter of a man of large fortune, but the girl's father, of whom the rumor goes that he is a bit of a miser, but hush. Speaking of the devil, do you see that man coming on foot under the arch of San Felipe, all muffled up in a dark cloak and attended by a single servant carrying a lantern? Now he is in front of the outer shrine. Do you notice, as his cloak falls back while he salutes the image, the embroidered cross that sparkles on his breast? If it were not for this noble decoration, one would take him for a shopkeeper from Calabris Street. Well, that is the father in question. See how the people make way for him and lift their hats. Everybody in Seville knows him on account of his immense fortune. That one man has more golden ducats in his chests than our Lord King Philip maintains soldiers, and with his merchantmen he could form a squadron equal to that of the Grand Turk, look, look at that group of stately cavaliers. Those are the four and twenty knights. Aha, aha. There goes that precious Fleming, too, whom, they say, the gentlemen of the Green Cross have not challenged for heresy yet, thanks to his influence with the magnates of Madrid. All he comes to church for is to hear the music. But if Master Perez does not draw from him with his organ tears as big as fists, then sure it is that his soul isn't under his doublet, but sizzles in the devil's frying pan. Alack, neighbor. Trouble, trouble. I fear there is going to be a fight. I shall take refuge in the church, for, from what I see, there will be hereabouts more blows than paternosters. Look, look. The Duke of Alcala's people are coming round the corner of San Pedro's Square, and I think I spy the Duke of Metanacedonia's men in Duenas Alley. Didn't I tell you? Now they have caught sight of each other, now the two parties stop short, without breaking their order, the groups of bystanders dissolve, the police, who on these occasions get pounded by both sides, slip away, even the prefect, staff of office and all, seeks the shelter of the portico, and yet they say that there is law to be had. For the poor, there, there. Already shields are shining through the dark. Our Lord Jesus of all power deliver us. Now the blows are beginning. Neighbor, neighbor. This way, before they close the doors. But hush. What is this? Hardly have they begun when they leave off. What light is that? Blazing torches. A litter. It's his reverence the bishop. The most holy virgin of protection, on whom this very instant I was calling in my heart, brings him to my aid. Ah. But nobody knows what I owe to that blessed lady, how richly she pays me back for the little candles that I burn to her every Saturday. See him. How beautiful he is with his purple vestments and his red cardinal's cap. 
God preserve him in his sacred chair as many centuries as I wish to live myself. If it were not for him, half Seville would have been burned up by this time with these quarrels of the dukes.